Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. Um, I know y'all notice I'm in a different location today for my porch time. The, the problem is the, uh, some people call them locusts, some people call them cicadas. Uh, they are so loud outside that literally your eardrums rattle. Um, and it seems like every way I've fought to get this video out, I've had some sort of a complication. Um, and I know y'all see I'm wearing glasses. Uh, ever since I've started doing this series um, on talking about what's going on, things have been happening to me. Uh, I have failed, y'all knew that. Now I'm del I have developed what's called kaleidoscope eye with my eyes. I don't know if that's coming from staring at the screen too much on a computer or what. I'm beginning to stay where I stay dizzy all the time now and I'm having a lot of physical issues in that area. So. What that tells me is that I'm actually on the right track. Uh, so I'm not gonna quit. I mean, that's the one thing about me. I may go down, but I'm not gonna quit. Because if, if this is a message that God wants me to get out there, and that my porch time is actually benefiting people, then I wanna keep doing it, as long as I'm physically able to. So what I wanna do is I wanna continue on what in the world is going on. Because my friends, I'm going to tell y'all, just why don't y'all just get you a chair and just pull it up and let's just talk. Let's, let's just get serious with one another for a little while. Let's just have some one-on-one, -on -one, sit down and talk, and let's just think about some things. Since I, since I did my last porch time on what in the world is going on, uh, Y'all as subscribers have sent me numerous letters and have sent me numerous emails and uh, private messages and stuff like that. And I really appreciate that, I do, because it lets me know where the heart of, where y'all's heart's at. And, and there's so many of you that your heart's really in the right spot and I think you really are beginning to get uh, what's going on. Um, you know, as I mentioned in the live stream the other night, I told y'all the Lord laid some things on my heart that uh, that I know is fixing to happen. Um, and I and I told you that I wasn't going to just burst out and say what I because look, it's really there's some things that I'm even having some problems processing. So, and it's only because I have loved ones and uh, you know, and, and some things even bring a touch of anxiety to me as as well as I know what might happen and I don't want to I don't want to throw that on y'all um, so you know some of the some of the letters that came in uh, one individual I won't call names uh, because I really don't have that authority to do that but one individual told me that their whole area had been sprayed for the Zika virus uh, unbeknowing to them and when that happened, uh, it's killed all the bees in that area. I mean, it's just devastated the, uh, the, the bee business. It's, uh, everything's become toxic now. And, uh, you know, no telling what the outcome of this spraying will be uh, as far as future ramifications. You know, and I, I, I do believe that it's all a higher anarchy type situation I've had people tell me that uh, they've had an earthquake in their place, uh, which is unsettling to them. Uh, as I mentioned to you before, Daniel told, you know, sent the video out and sent a message to us that he'd had an earthquake up where he lives in Oklahoma. And I've been sent messages that the New Madrid, they've had uh, some earthquakes around Madrid, Missouri, and different things is going on in different parts of the country. I can't sit here and tell y'all all the stuff that's been sent to me. I mean, it would, do, it would take too long and and I don't have the, the time to edit it. I don't have the time to upload it because of our slow internet speed. But I just want to tell y'all that there's, there's a force that's out there to be reckoned with. Um, many of y'all have sent me some messages speaking about uh, end time theories and end time prophecies and stuff like that and 
and I am very familiar with a lot of the stuff that y'all send me, and, but I appreciate you sending it anyway because it really tells me that you're paying attention. Now, I'm, I'm really concerned. As you notice today, I'm a little bit, my speech is a little bit hesitant because I'm trying to really choose my words wisely. I, uh, you know, I love each and every one of y'all. And I love the fact that you don't mind sitting down and having a one-on-one -on -one with us here. You know, we can talk face to face. Um, even though I can't see y'all's face, you can see mine. And, and I wish it could be the other way around, but it, it's, I don't see any way for that to happen right now. But, you know, in the beginning, uh, the old devil, uh, for our Hebrew friends, Hasatan, uh, knew that uh, how to attack man. He attacked man with his help in the garden. You know, he tricked him into uh, partaking of the fruit, and the, the forbidden fruit, which affected man's health, because up to that point, man didn't die, and then after that, man began to die gradually, which meant that it affected his health. Well, in the last days in which we live now, uh, which I believe we're, we're heading into those times, I'm not saying we're in the last days, but we're, we're getting close, I believe. The devil's done the same thing again. There is a spirit of pharmacia in the air. Uh, and if you don't believe me, just turn the television on, which I don't do very often anymore, just simply because I've noticed that every 15 minutes when a commercial comes on that um, now where we live at may be different than where you live at. But I, would probably, I wouldn't hesitate to say 75% of the commercials has to do with pharmaceutical drugs. And... So Satan in the last days is going to try to affect man's health once again to bring him down. And, and I believe he's done a very successful job at that. Not only is it the pharmaceutical medicines, it's uh, the, the GMOs that's in the foods now, um, you know, all the, the, the chemicals. I, I could sit here, one that gets on to me a lot of times because I get so involved in some of these chemicals that's going on in our foods you know, she tells me, Danny, you, you got to eat something. And, and I do, and I do realize that. But that's one reason we try to, you know, eat as much as we can from our place here. And I know we've had a lot of messages come from people that says, uh, I don't have the income to stock up with like most people do. And, and, you know, as Wanda and I went through the grocery store, matter of fact, we went this morning uh, to pick up a few things that, um, we were a little bit short on because I'm telling you, I, I don't know when the things are going to happen that's going to happen. I just know that I feel in my bones and my heart, I feel like it's close. But as we was in there, as I walked down those aisles, I told Wanda, I said, let's just look and see what people could purchase on a limited income, even though it may not be the best foods in the world, because I'm going to tell you when when a life-changing event takes place and there is no food out there, hardly look, you'll eat anything. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be organic. You'll just eat what you got to eat to survive because even I know that. And, you know, I saw many things down those aisles, uh, two for a dollar, uh, one dollar stuff. I mean, the stores that we have have dollar aisles and they have food all up and down those dollar aisles. And, and we went through by the meat department, the day-old meat or the meat that just went out of expiration date. You know, a lot of that stuff, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that man has to put a date on it. They have new meat coming in, they have to get rid of the old stuff. And there's just absolutely nothing wrong with it as far as trying to get you some meat to stock up on it. And it's way less than half price. But you know, I'm really concerned about things that are starting to happen because, you know, used to, you heard about something maybe once every few years happening. Uh, and you'd say, wow, boy, that's kind of unusual. Well, that, that would have never happened years ago. And then as time went on, you'd hear about it every month or two, you'd hear about something happening. And then now, and then it was every week, and, and now it, it's daily now. And you, in the news, you've got what's called your gatekeepers who screen everything that goes out on the media because they don't want to create panic and stuff like that. So they, they basically... Uh, go in and they, they monitor what we're told and when we're told it, you know. So, you know, there is a group that's called the gatekeepers and they do 
they do monitor the media. That's why you don't really find out the truth a lot of times on a lot of matters. I'm just concerned about man has really sit back and is destroying our environment. And I know that it's, a, I, I do know all the ins and outs of it. I'm not going to go into a lot of that stuff. I understand what's happening. You know, people talk about chemtrails. I'm very familiar with chemtrails. Chemtrails actually began with the military when they used to move um, nukes around. They would go up and spray the atmosphere with the aluminums and stuff so the satellites could, you know, ricochet off of it and not be able to actually locate and see what they were doing on the ground. I understand that, but man has gotten to this greed point now where he wants to control everything. He doesn't want God to have a part in anything anymore. And that's very sad because when, it, when we get to that point, it's a lot like in the Bible when, when the Lord, you know, destroyed the world with the flood. He said man's, man is just, he's, he's just wicked. Everything about man was wicked at that point. And he said man's heart's deceitful. It's wicked above all things. And he says, and it's come up before me and I'm going to destroy all mankind. I'm going to destroy all the beasts of the earth. And he did that. He, he allowed a flood to take place and he spared one man, Noah. And, you know, that must have been an awesome feat to be the only man on the face of the earth that actually was uh, found grace in God's eyes. And, and boy, what a responsibility that is. And so I want us to stop and think about today. A lot of us have children. A lot of us have grandchildren. And... You know, I talked in my last one about paying it forward. You know, we need to quit thinking about our own selves so much and we need to start thinking about what we can do to uh, actually be a blessing to our families. And, and I do understand that a lot of people have family members that they don't want at their place. You know, we've got them in our family. Everybody's got them uh, because they'd be more trouble than they'd be worth. It'd cause so much heartache and headache that it, it, it really it would drag you down. And I do understand that because we've been sent messages from people that says, you know, I, I don't think I can handle my kids being around my place. And, and I understand that. Um, but, but still, as an individual, you know, in the neighborhoods that we live in, uh, some people live in suburban areas. You know, that's the ones I really worry about. People who's got like one or two acres of land and they got all kinds of animals piled up on them. If a life-changing event takes place, y'all, I mean, I'm not trying to be a fear monger. I'm not trying to be rude in any form or fashion. I'm, I'm just a basic, plain, like Jay Noel says, I'm just a plain dude, and I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to tell y'all what God's laid on my heart. You know, people talk about they live in suburban areas, and and they talk about how they, you know, if something happens, they're gonna get out of there and get to a place, and y'all, I mean, I'm. I've taught a lot of different subjects and that that scenario is very unlikely to happen that you'd get out because if a life-changing event takes place the first thing that's going to happen is interstates are going to be shut down you know bridges will be shut down where you can't get across them uh, you know roadways are going to be closed off there, I could go into a lot of stuff, y'all. I, I don't really want to at this point, but I know that there's some there's some things coming. Uh, one thing I will tell y'all that when my wife was dying, as she lay dying in my arms, she looked up at me and she told me, she said, "Danny, one day the grocery store shelves will be empty. There will be no food. Stock up on food." And she said, don't ever cut your hair. I'm sorry that I've tried to keep your hair cut so short all the time because I see the other side. It doesn't mean a thing. You know, so for what that's worth, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I still cut my hair. I don't worry about it. Uh, but those are things that she told me as she was dra drawing her last breaths. And I guess the one thing that sticks to me the most is the empty grocery store shelves. And and I have been watching the news. I do see things that's going on. I know I've been following Venezuela now for about three years. Um, but those people down there are fleeing that country. They're trying to get out of there. And I don't know where they think they're going to go, but, you know, it's not that much better anywhere else. And 
and here in America, there's a lot of us, you know, a lot of people still have good jobs and stuff, and they go, man, I don't know what you're even talking about. I got a good job. But there's a lot of us that don't have a good job, and we're already seeing the horrors of the other side. And, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time to get used to not having an income. As I've told y'all in my earlier porch times, I went from having a, a nice income to having zero income. And it kind of reminded me of the verse of the Apostle Paul said, I've learned how to live with a lot and I've learned how to live with a little. And that's kind of where we're at. You know, we have to learn to live on both sides. If you have, if you have an abundance, learn how to live with it and not let it go to your head. Use it wisely. But if you don't have anything, then learn how to live that way too and still be happy. Still be full of joy. Because, to be honest with you, it's not your paycheck that takes care of you. It, it's God above. If you go into Psalms, um, I, I'm trying to remember where it's at in Psalms. I used to have most of the Bible memorized. I want to say it's around 35, maybe verses 12 through 22, somewhere through there that... Uh, it talks about a, a mighty man is not saved by you know his strength. Uh, a king is not saved by his by a mighty army. You know, a horse is a vain thing for security and all this. And it goes on in the latter parts of those verses to say it is God who delivers you in times of famine and stuff like that. And I know that's paraphrasing the scripture. So, uh, but my point is, we can prepare. We can do all that we need to do. But my friends. You know, it's all about where you're at with the Lord because ultimately it is He who takes care of us. Um, matter of fact, in Scripture, He says, It is I who put people in authority as far as power, like presidents and stuff like that. He says in Scripture, It's me who does that because God has a will and He has a plan and He's trying to execute that plan. And I know we have the freedom to vote, but I do believe God moves the hearts of people to put people in office who He originally plans to have in office to do what he needs to do and get a job done and also you know I'm not trying to turn this into a preaching session but there's so many things that comes to my mind that uh, in, in in the New Testament or the for you Hebrew got people the Brit Hadashah um, in uh, Matthew uh, he, he well actually it's in all four Gospels but I mean he talks about that these things, uh, I think it's Matthew 24 as a matter of fact, he said these things must come to pass. Don't let your hearts be troubled. These things must happen before the end comes. And, and I guess that's my whole point right now I'm trying to make is that there's so much going on around us that I don't want everybody to be in a panic mode. I don't want everybody to be, af to be afraid and to live in fear. I just want us to use our heads and be wisely, not wise, not wisely, um, calm, and try to prepare as much as we can, because the Lord said these things have to happen. Um, there's going to be earthquakes in, 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 in diverse places, you know, there's famines and pestilences, and if y'all, if any of y'all raised a garden this year, you've seen the heat. We're, we're still experiencing heat. It's mid-September, and we're still experiencing... I'm, we're having triple-digit heat here where I'm at still, in the heat indexes. And uh, I, I plant a few things. And I don't plant much right now, but I'll experiment with a few things. In a few days, the bugs have just completely eat it, slammed up, and ain't even anything left anymore. So that's, you know, I see that the heat and the pestilences and... With man tampering with the with the atmosphere the way he is through geoengineering, uh, there's going to probably be famines that's going to take place. And as a matter of fact, it's already taking places in some parts of the world. And people, it's it's really closer than we think. Um, you know, I'll go into some other things later down in the line about what's laid on my heart, and I'll try to explain them to you a little bit better in detail. It's just that. Um, since I started doing this series, so many things have started happening to me. And I have other YouTube friends who are doing the same things, experiencing ex their own difficulties. They're having all kinds of physical issues. And, and the, you know, the devil's right on their back, just like he is mine. I mean, he's on mine constantly. And I'm trying to fight him off, you know, as, as much as I can. 
and still try to get these videos out to y'all. And it's only because I feel like it's what God wants me to do and I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, you know, if you don't like what you hear from this, I'm not asking you to sit here. You can leave as far as I'm concerned. You can go listen to something else if it bothers you that bad. But the end results is going to be the same. Um, you're still going to endure with us. So, you know, you might as well learn what you can. Sit down and just, just listen. And, you know, I just like, I just like sitting down and having this one-on-one -on -one time with y'all. I know I didn't go into a lot of in-depth detail today, and I, and I did that on purpose. I just want to, uh, I want to get y'all's feelings on some of this stuff. I want y'all to uh, let me know how you feel about me having this type of a porch time. You know, I, I know I'm not on the swing today. I'm actually in my office sitting down and having this because literally the outside is just so much noise the devil's just using so many outside creatures right now to disturb it that i decided to come inside and try to do it inside and, um but anyway i'm gonna stop right there today um i'm gonna try to uh get some videos up and get them going the rest of this week show you all a little bit more about what we're doing we're preparing for fall and it's it look we're preparing this year like we've never prepared before because I do believe that uh, I do believe that time is short. Um, there are some things coming in our uh, in our heavens in 2017 that um, I'll probably talk to y'all about at a later date that has not been in 2,000 years and won't be again for another thousand years. And maybe in my next porch time or some other chat that I decide to do, we'll talk about these constellations. And if you don't, if you want to get a heads up. Google it. Find out what constellation is coming in 2017. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and tell you it's in September of 2017. It's a constellation that's mentioned in the Bible. And it might run a few chills up down your body. It might make you realize, you know what, we may be closer to some things than we think we are. So, anyway, I love y'all. Thank y'all for sitting here today spending some time with me as we talk. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.